Okay, so uh, so now we're 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 talking about uh, semantic media wiki structured data in the semantic bundle, and this basically covers a lot of the uh, semantic media wiki based uh, extensions and other extensions that don't directly use semantic media wiki but are often used in conjunction with it. Um, uh, and uh, uh, yeah, that's it. And you already met me, but feel free to just introduce yourself. Oh, uh, okay. Um, I'm Yoon. Um, I guess most of you that are already using Semantic Media Wiki have heard of me. Um, um, as Jerome already mentioned, together with Marcus, I'm one of the maintainers of the project at the moment. Um, I most of the work I did on Semantic Media Wiki was either as a volunteer or as a consultant. Um, but right now I'm working for the Wikimedia Foundation and for Wikimedia Germany on the Wikidata project, um, which is very much related to Semantic Media Wiki, uh, basically getting similar functionality onto Wikipedia. Um, I will give a talk about this on the last day, so uh, yeah. Cool. Um, okay. Uh, okay. So, so we're we're just gonna alternate through these uh, this stuff. But um, the semantic bundle is that's uh, it's sort of the the, the way that uh, we structured this talk. It's um, uh, just focusing on extensions contained within uh, the semantic bundle. That's a, a package of extensions that uh, that you and I maintain, and it. Um, it's 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 a curated set of tools, you could say. It represents our philosophy about uh, about the best way to use Semantic Media Wiki uh, and uh, use structured data in conjunction with it. And there's a URL here. Um, uh, if you go there, it, it lists everything, and then there's a download links and all that. Although th this talk won't be about the Semantic Bundle per se, but it, it's just about some of the extensions that we that we like that are contained within it. Yeah, maybe one quick note about Semantic Bundle. Um, one of the nice things about it is that it contains a whole set of extensions. So if you often you just need these extensions and then you can get them all together. And we sort of um, make sure that they all work, to, uh, that the versions of the extensions in the bundle all work um, together nicely. So um, you don't have to worry too much about um, getting the right versions uh, right if you do it individually. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, yeah. The versions are, are aligned. Yeah. Uh, okay, so here's the list of extensions that are in Semantic Bundle. Uh, uh, we the, we're only going to talk about the bolded ones. Some of them were mentioned before, and some we're just not going to get to. Um, hopefully, this is enough. So, uh, so we'll we'll talk briefly about semantic result formats. Uh, Yurun is giving a talk. On Friday, with a with a fuller listing, because it's, it's there's a lot of stuff there. Um, yeah, right. So now we'll just quickly explain what the extension does and show some quick examples. And my talk um, on the last day will um, cover some new interesting developments. Uh, it will mainly focus on what happened in the last year, uh, what people are currently working on, and what would be nice to see in the future. In the future, right. Um, so, Semantic Media Wiki comes built with a bunch of standard um, output formats you can use for uh, displaying query results. Um, and it allows other extensions to basically add new ones. And Semantic Result Format is a sort of a bundle extension that holds a whole pile of um, additional result formats you can use. And these are all kinds of formats such as um, calendars, maps timelines, graphs, uh, yeah. Um, yeah, this is a, an example of um, <coughs> a, um, an interactive timeline um, constructed by semantic result formats, which allows you to just scroll through it, click on things, and navigate there. Um, this is an example of a calendar. Um, so yeah, pretty straightforward. Um, a graph, charts, and um, this is Exhibit, um, which is a very interesting format. Um, 
although it's a bit broken at the moment, um, but what's interesting about it is that it um, loads a whole set of data in your web page in JavaScript and then allows you to dynamically filter um, on the results with various criteria. Um, um, I'll come back to this, um, being able to filter things and um, modify your query on the fly without reloading the page or going to another page um, in my talk. Um, Question. Yeah, Is that like a mashup? Did you put this on top of an existing map? It uses Google Maps. So it is a mashup? Yeah. But it's all, I mean, it's all one library. It's, yeah. it's, it's a third party library. Yeah, although it doesn't work. Um, most of the result, the result formats and um, the semantic result formats extension use third-party libraries to display all the things, right? We we did not um, create the libraries to, to uh, display the graphs and timelines of ourselves. Uh, this would be a lot of maintenance work, right? Uh, yeah. Did you have a roadmap for this uh, Roadmap? Yeah, yeah. Well, it's another guy who's doing it. I don't know. Um, so you're asking for a roadmap on the on the replacement that is being got. Oh yeah, um, I will cover this in my presentation okay. uh, on the last day. Uh, yeah. Um, another extension that um, adds additional result formats is semantic maps extension, um, which. Um, really focuses on all uh, geographical um, kind of visualizations. Um, and it also defines uh, actual geographic coordinate um, properties. So um, when you're working with someone with Wiki that it actually understands what the coordinate is, um, that it understands how to um, parse it and how to convert it to other um, coordinate systems. Um, and it also allows you to do a bunch of um, interesting things, such as um, doing a query for everything that has a coordinate within a certain uh, radius of another point. So you can do geospatial operations with it. Yeah, I figured I'd show. Oh, well, actually, we have, sorry, sorry. We, we should show that later. We have uh, this slides for, for some, showing some examples. <coughs> Um, maybe can, can, uh, can you show the um, maybe mapping that has some good uh, okay, examples on sure. it? Just the uh, examples page. Yeah, I went there already. So um, the extension has uh, supports several different mapping uh, libraries. It uh, supports Google Maps, it supports Yahoo Maps, and it supports open layers. Um, and it has its own wiki with a whole load of documentation on it. Um, Oh, it's still loading. Uh, hmm. Right, uh, so this is an example of um, a geospatial query. Um, okay, it's falling a bit on the actual screen. <laughs> So, so what this does is um, it, it gets everything with um, coordinates that are within um, 420 kilometers of uh, the specified point there. Um, um, it's also using, um, well, the map format supports a template parameter, which allow you to um, format the output in the um, balloons you get when you click the markers. Um, so if you click here, um, this particular template also has a geospatial calculation in it which um, figures out how far um, the current point is away from um, Brussels in this case. So, yeah. Oh, you want to go back to that? Yeah. yeah, and it has a whole bunch of other examples there. Um, yeah. Uh, and yeah, there's more screenshots. Yeah, right. Okay, yeah. Here are a few screenshots. Uh, this is open layers uh, using open street maps. So this is completely free and open data. 
A year or so, or a bit under a year, the extension uses Google Maps Feed Tree. Um, um, the latest release still includes Feed 2 for the people that were using it, so they can continue using it, but the next release will not have Feed 2 anymore, so it uses Feed Tree. Okay. Yeah, then there's no Yahoo example in there. Yeah. It, besides Google Maps and OpenLayers, it also supports Yahoo Maps as the third framework, but it's, it's, there's no screenshot for that one. Okay. Uh, uh, semantic mo compound queries is another extension. Uh, it lets you uh, display more than one query in the same place. Uh, in practice, that's, that's mostly useful for maps and calendars, especially maps. Um, so, well, this is not, this is not a, it's, it's not that, in exciting looking in looking example, but basically there's two different kinds of markers here that are representing two different kinds of points. I think one is award winners and one is people who are just nominated. Um, well, why don't we show the community? We yeah, we should. I was example. just thinking that same thing. Yes. Uh, so the Semantic Media Wiki has its own uh, community wiki, uh, which uh, I'm the maintainer of. Uh, uh, which has a nice uh, usage of this on its front page whenever that loads. Tweet? I guess that, that's going to be something more interesting. Um, okay, so, well, we'll get back to that. Um, oh, okay, it's loading. Yeah, okay, right, so, um, so people here are the regular pink or whatever this color is marker. Uh, organizations are green and events are blue. Uh, there hasn't been an event thing put in for this current SMWCon, but uh, it would show up here. Um, yeah, I mean maps are are, are, are uh, actually let me let me show you what what the actual call is for this. It's a, it's a call to a parser function called compound query. Um, that takes, it has a, you know, a, a syntax basically like ask. It takes in just basically a set of queries and then it applies a, an icon onto each one. Um, so yeah, you can do, you can also do the same thing for calendars. This is, uh, this is from a, a wiki of political opinions and it shows the, 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 um, Opinion items for the two uh, main presidential candidates during the uh, 2008 U.S. Uh, election, color coded, and uh, you know, you, uh, for uh, for an internal company wiki, for instance, you could have uh, you know meetings in one color and uh, and uh, you know holidays in another color, etc. That sort of thing. What's next? Oh, okay, forms. Uh, yeah, semantic forms. Uh, it's um, it's a it's a big extension at this point. Uh, it lets you create forms for um, for creating and editing uh, wiki pages using template calls as the uh, uh, as the, the framework for the data structure. Um, uh, in wiki style, each form is defined by its own uh, page in the in a in namespace defined by semantic forms called form. Uh, and then besides just creating and editing wiki pages, you can also uh, use them to uh, to run search queries. It's got a whole lot of features. Uh, you can have a whole bunch of input types within forms, uh, auto-completion. Uh, other extensions can define their own input types. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll get to that and you can do validation. Okay, so let me just do a little demo here. Um, okay, so here's, uh, we'll just do a few examples. Here's a, a nice example of a, of a, of a, a map. This is a, a, a wiki of restaurants, so I can just click on one at random, Pizzeria Due. Um, if I go here, then we've got this edit with form tab. Usually it shows up alongside an edit tab, but you can, have, you can make the edit with form tab uh, disappear. Um, so um, yeah, this form shows up when you when you go here, and since this is uh, this wiki allows anonymous edits, I could actually go in here and change this 
uh, change any part of this. Uh, so you can have drop downs for uh, for for um, uh, fields that are delimited, um, and you can have text areas for longer things. And semantic maps defines a mapped input, so you can actually move around the the location of the place. Uh, you can look up coordinates. It's another cool feature. So you know, if I know it's located near uh, the Sears Tower or something. That work? Uh, Eiffel Tower. What's, what's going on? Just Maybe slow. it's just slow. Slow? Probably. Okay, uh, fine. It's not updating the browser that it showed. The... Oh, yeah, it's not. Well, that may or may not mean anything. Hello. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what's going on. Anyway, usually that works. Um, so, um, um, you know, a lot of this it, it ties in with the, the, the semantic media wiki data structure. So, for instance, um, <clears throat> if, a, if, a, if, a, if a parameter corresponds to, if a template parameter or field corresponds to a property that's of type text, meaning it's a, it's a, uh, it's a, it's a string of indeterminate length, then by default it puts in a text area. Um, and if it corresponds to an enumeration, that's something that uses allows value, then it puts in a drop down, a radio button, or whatever you want to specify. Uh, then there's also autocompletion, so the cuisine can be um, can be anything. You know, I can type in something, and, and it will it autocomplete with previously used values. And in this case, this has this multiple value autocompletion, so I can also put in. Uh, yeah, okay, keep going that way. Yeah. Um, um, so actually, let me let me do that. Let me hit show changes here. Just show what what happens. Yeah, you can see it actually modifies the the template call that's that's the actual contents of this page um, with new information. Uh, and then I'll just show you the um, the form. Um, so every page is defined via a form. Um, This one's called Good Eats. Every form is defined via a form definition, which has its own page. Um, I won't get into the syntax here, although all of the syntax is in those handouts that you got, along with a lot of this other stuff that we've talked about, by the way. Um, uh, you can see, is that big enough? Oh, man. Um, Right, okay, so each of these fields has a field tag, and then you can set other parameters for, for, in, on it. for instance, I said that this one, or I didn't, but whoever did it, not me, uh, said that, that this has to be mandatory and, um, and that it uses autocompletion here. Um, yeah, and then even the buttons at the end have their own uh, tags that you can uh, format in different ways. Um, that's the basic idea with hackerspaces. I just wanted to, I guess this is rather similar, this is a rather similar example, but here's another example of it being used for, uh, for hackerspaces.org. Um, yeah, you know, there's a whole bunch of formatting that you can do within forms, because it's all just wiki text, so you can, uh, you can set the display however you want. Um, okay, that wasn't so bad. Um, Oh, I didn't show the run query thing. Well, if we have time later. Um, semantic form inputs. Uh, it just defines additional, it's the equivalent of semantic result formats uh, for form input. So it's, it's basically a placeholder that, that can hold any additional, more complex input types. Um, uh, right now it has three. Date picker, regex, which lets you do custom validation, like for instance, if you want to val validate that something is a, is a telephone number and that has to have 10 digits, etc. Um, and then menu select that lets you choose from a menu. I'll just show, I'll just show the first of those, date picker. Uh, here's a, uh, this is a wiki that, uh, that Yarun uh, developed for his, for hackerspace, for your hackerspace, yeah. Um, uh, so if I click on, it, yeah, you can you can re, you can change the, around the wording. So in this case, the edit tab is the edit with form tab, and edit source is the the regular uh, editing standard editing. Uh, 
So if I if I click on that, uh, eventually uh, I should have just left it before. Oh. Um, well, we'll get back to that. Oh, okay, here it is. Um, the JavaScript has to finish loading. Uh, you can see some of the other stuff here, but uh, we get to that. There's drop downs and text area. Uh, oh, yeah, and I didn't mention the upload file. Okay, so while this loads, I'll uh, note that you can also make a file contain uh, an, an upload file link, which is a lot more convenient than using the standard uh, sidebar upload file link, where you first have to upload and then you have to remember the name of the file that you just uploaded and put it in the page where you want it to go. Uh, here it does that all at once. So uh, maybe this is, um, no, oh, it's it's not, it's not, yeah. ah, I shouldn't have done that. Oh, in any case, you have to be logged in to, um, you have, uh, do I have to re refresh the page then? Yeah, I think it timed out, so. Oh, uh, okay. Well, normally the, the, the upload, the clicking on that would, would produce a little, you know, mini window within the, within the bigger window that let you select the, the file and then once you, were, once you, once you uploaded it, the, the, the name also shows up right in the uh, uh, input, so it does two things at once. Uh, what's going on? This worked like 10 minutes ago. Yeah, this right. is a networking issue, so. Yeah, networking. Okay, fine. Anyway, you would get a nice uh, JavaScript style date picker like you see a lot on websites. Um, okay. Anyway, that's that. Um, semantic drill down. Okay, I'll, I'll talk about it. Um, it provides a, a drill down interface for SMW data. This is this is uh, another popular extension. Uh, here is a screenshot <clears throat> from uh, from the current uh, Semantic Media Wiki Wiki of the Month, by the way. Um, so you can you can check out more about it on uh, Semantic the Semantic Media Wiki homepage. It basically d uh, shows a a set of filters, and each of these filters corresponds to a semantic property. Uh, and then it lets you uh, it lets you drill down to find you know interesting data, uh, and at the same time it shows you the, the current layout of the data within the wiki. So you can see you know right at a glance you can see uh, this this page contains a lot of information specifically uh, relating to Ireland, for instance. Uh, so actually I have oh okay before we do that uh, is proof that this works. Um, you know, it's what you'd expect it to look like, I guess, is a, a JavaScript date picker. And uh, this one's actually the, the date time picker, so it actually lets you uh, change the uh, the hour and minute. Oh yeah, I remember the interface now. It's like, right, okay, cool. Uh, so where's the, uh, uh, oh, here it is. Okay, so so this is, this is that, that same, Page the, uh, the traditional tune archive. Um, if I now here's the the semantic drill down interface. Um, so what what I can do is somebody uh, shout out a uh, something you want me to click on anything. Canada. Canada. Okay. So this this is all the pages that have historical allegiances to Canada. Uh, uh, as you might guess, the majority of them are from Canada, uh, and you know. So you know, I want I want only th those that have historical allegiances to Canada that are in the key of G and uh, are in uh, uh, Down East Maritime style. You know, you can keep going that way, uh, and then at any point you you see the results here, so you can you can uh, you can um, click on uh, those. Yeah. Is there any overlapping of functionality between exhibit and this thing? There is a yes. I mean, they both essentially do the same thing. Exhibit has a nicer interface, uh, but it's it's it, it's uh, it's quirkier because it's based it's it's all in done JavaScript and client side as opposed to this, which is all PHP and server side. Um, so it's just it's it's more unstable, and right now it doesn't work. But in theory, if Exhibit were working, uh, then it's yeah, it's a nicer interface. Uh, 
Um, semantic drill down is better at handling uh, large quantities of data just because it's, it's not trying to put it all in the, in the browser. Uh, so yeah, this can easily handle thousands of pages. Um, although it has uh, it has performance issues. I mean, uh, when when people have performance issues with their wiki, oftentimes it's semantic drill down that's the culprit. Because um, to it, generating every one of these numbers is a separate query. Um, it's a, a, a SQL query, so so it, that can really add up. Um, but it's it's cool. What's the underlying triple store? It just uses uh, SQL. It, oh yeah, I forgot to mention. Yes, the the the, the actual storage of Semantic Media Wiki is all in a, a relational database, generally MySQL, the, the same database that the Media Wiki itself is in. Uh, so this is just hitting the the, the that database directly. Uh, at some point, it would be nice if this could uh, hit a triple store, also. But uh, I don't know how. Right, but Boston Antimina you know, Wiki has a data store abstraction layer, so it can communicate with, uh, well, by default it uh, uses MySQL, but it also has support for uh, Postgres to some extent, and has some um, early support for uh, triple stores such as free to Bozo and four store. Um, yeah. And as a, if I'm not mistaken, this extension just communicates communicate with uh, the abstraction layer, so it should work with triple stores as well. No, no, unfortunately, no. It, it for for performance reasons, it, it hits the the, the SQL uh, yeah. database directly. So yeah, I mean, it, it works with a variety of relational databases, but not with triple stores. Um, yeah, because it does it generates like uh, temporary tables and all that kind of stuff. Um, yeah. Okay. So yeah, and and uh, basically the, the way the, the way you set this up is you create a, a filter for each one of these filters, uh, and a filter is just a page within a, its own namespace called filter. Um, so if I you know if I, I could go to like filter colon region to see what they have set up for that one. Oh, okay. I guess they called it something else. All right, it doesn't matter. Uh, that's basically what it would be. Uh, yeah. Okay. So one of the nice features in MediaWiki is that you can um, track changes by uh, various mechanisms such as logs and recent changes, but you can also get more personalized results by um, watching pages, um, which then basically allows you to um, get a personal um, log of changes made to these pages. Um, and semantic watch list. Um, sort of does the same, but allows you to specify the things you're interested in um, by um, using categories, uh, properties, concepts, namespaces. So you can basically say that you um, want to watch uh, a certain category and that you're interested in changes to the values of certain properties in this category. Um, and this is great because in a lot of cases you're more interested in the changes to the structured data than just changes to the page itself, right? Um, if you have a page um, about a restaurant and it has the fact box with the structured data and it has a whole block of text, then you might not care about uh, somebody adding a line of text in the, the, the whole description, but you might care about um, them changing the rating of the restaurant or where it's located. So um, this extension allows you to basically do this. Um, uh, question about that? <coughs> sure. Have you guys thought about uh, being able to watch the results of an inline query? Um, well, this basically allows you to do this. I want to perform with a template then. Uh, excuse me? I want to be able to make dynamic watch lists. Yeah, these are dynamic watch lists. Um, can you give an example? Um, my uh, users create a page and they uh, include the company Intel and the processor the Media 4100. And um, there's a list inside it. And if that list on the page, if someone has new content with Intel and C4100, so it would show up on that list, I want them to be updated. Without me having to make a concept in talent 
dynamic that. Well, th there's performance issues with that because you don't want to allow anyone to just create their own watch list conditions and then have that be watched. I mean, that can, that can a, a, a malicious set of users could, uh, could break down the wiki that way. Yes, and that was a silly experience. In, in the case of a page I have, I have a lot of queries that form it. If it changes because the data changed, it'd be nice to be able to know that. Yeah, well, so this extension watches the, the changes to the actual data. Right. So if exactly. somebody edits a page, it will check if the data uh, is watched by somebody, and if so, it will propagate to the relevant uh, watch list of these users. Right. Um, so there are not that many performance issues here, and you can also configure um, which users are allowed to define watch lists and who aren't. Um, yeah, but he's saying let everyone be able to define a watch list, I think. Yeah, you, you, you can yeah. configure it. Yeah, yeah, that's true, you can configure it to do that. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, uh, let, me, let me comment on something. So for the semantic uh, watch list and notification extension, there are at least three different ones, right? Semantic watch list is one, and also there's another one called the semantic notification. Uh, and there's also another brand called Semantic Notify Me, uh, which was actually developed way earlier, like year 2008, but wasn't that popular. So if you watch, if you Google it, look at Semantic Notify Me extension, it actually allows to, or any user, to create a query, and that query specify a, a criteria. You want, you know, uh, certain things to be fit into this query, like if, like like a list of things, right? If the, if the list is generated by a query, you can just use the same query to create a notification for that query. If anything that falls into that query, then you'll get notified. So and the that's, function that, that's semantic notify me? That's called semantic notify me. Yeah. Is that this extension no longer maintain me? Yeah, well, this, this extension can do everything. Well, it is maintained. It is no, it's the older extension can do. I don't know how to put it We actually uh, had the client that needed this functionality, mm -hmm. and we decided that the currently existing extensions use an approach that um, it's not really that robust because um, if you're always checking uh, just to see if a query changed and you need to go around the query periodically to see if there was a change. Um, if you have a lot of data, this can become very expensive. Right. And because um, you're doing it periodically, you might actually miss changes because something might have changed twice. Um, and you might have no idea about it, right? Uh, you, you can even imagine a funny scenario here where a malicious user that knows at which time your script runs to check if the results change, that they go in and change it, and just before your script runs, change it back to the original value, and after that, change it back to what they wanted to put in, right? Yeah. And you will never see it. So the answer is yes, you have thought about it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know, it's a tough one. Yeah, I get it. Uh, okay. Yeah, we're doing fine. Okay. Um, <clears throat> okay, so the, the next thing is uh, page schemas. Um, it's, uh, it's a fairly new extension and it's, it's, not, it's not being used that much yet, but uh, the idea for it is that it creates a, a, a framework for defining everything, uh, all this stuff that we've, that we've talked about, or a lot of the stuff that we've talked about in one place. Um, so a category can hold uh, can hold an XML schema that says these are all the fields uh, and this is the you know the form input for each one and the, the, the filter if it exists for each one um, uh, and then you can use the uh, the, uh, the form to both create it and re-edit it. So the the, the the hope the 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 ideal is that people can create all this stuff without actually needing to edit any wiki text. You uh, use the helper form to create and, and modify the, the XML schema, generate all the, and regenerate all the uh, you know the necessary uh, data structure pages until you're happy with it, and then of course once you have that, then the users can just use the forms and everything else without having to touch wiki text either. Uh, that's the you know that's the ideal. It's not being used that much yet for for whatever reason, but uh, uh, it's I think it's cool. Uh, here's an example of what it looks like. Uh, Let's see if I can bring up a, uh, a nicer version. Okay, yeah, so we have, um, this is actually just sort of a dummy usage of it, just, just as a, a test. Um, uh, you can see, this is, it's all stored within the category page, so you can see the page schema here. Um, 
you know, you define that it has a form of a certain name and it has a template of a certain name and these are all the fields and then you can go to uh, edit schema here to, um, to, to modify any of it. So, you know, I want to, I, I want to, um, uh, also create a form input for this, for this field, or that, that sort of thing. Then you can just, uh, save, resave that. Uh, and once you're happy with that, you can then generate all the corresponding pages for that category. Uh, uh, the property pages, template, and author, uh, you can click that and it'll resave, uh, all of those based on the new information. So yeah, it's cool in theory. Or in practice, also. Um, the external data extension, we talked about this a little before in terms of data integration. Um, <clears throat> there are different ways to import data, uh, and the basic, um, the basic split is whether you want to import the data and have it live in the wiki, or whether you want to have, have it live somewhere else and just use it within the wiki. So if it's the latter, uh, external data can help in a, a variety of contexts. Um, if you have the data in a web-based API or it's in a standard relational database uh, or an LDAP server, then you can query it and display it. And then you can store it in conjunction with Semantic Media Wiki. Um, so here's an actual example from uh, the wiki opencongress.org. There's, there's an API, there's a pretty well-known API of political, US political information put out by the Sunlight Foundation. Uh, so if you go to a certain page about a politician, at the bottom they'll have all this other stuff um, uh, about, about uh, that person that all just comes from the API, so it doesn't have to be re-entered uh, by the users of that wiki. Um, it already exists in one place and then any other wiki can just display it in this way. Um, so this comes from a web-based API, but as I said, you can also get it from a database or from an LDAP server. Admin links. It's just a. It's just a. It just creates a like a special a help. A help a page of helpful links for administrators. Because um, uh, Media MediaWiki has sometimes been criticized for not having like any sort of control panel or wizard. You know, some place to some starting place for for people who are just getting started on their wiki. So this provides that. If we want to let's say if let's say uh, someone let's say Open Congress or one of the other ones is using these uh, special forms, uh, namely there's a schema that describes this thing. Is there any way that a user can essentially go there and get the source code for that that we used to get source code for HTML when we were loading HTML a billion years ago and learn how to patch that? For forms? Yeah, like the, the kind of stuff that you have, like, you know, the uh, when you said, like, uh, like, like, let's say the external uh, data is defined in some kind of a mechanism. Oh yeah, absolutely. So, uh, so we can essentially read from, let's say, one of these uh, semantic wikis, how it did it. Oh so yeah, absolutely. Uh, these are all, it's, it's all contained within wiki pages. Uh, in this case, I can go there, I don't know if we should. Uh, I can go to, to the, the there's, there's just one specific template page on opencongress.org. I think it's template politician if I remember correctly, uh, that contains all of this stuff. It has, you know, the table for displaying it and then all the calls to the parser functions that external data defines. Uh, I guess it's get web data and external value in this but case. But in general, is a strategy where, let's say, we find something really neat being done by a semantic group. I wonder how they did that. Yeah. You know, the strategy of going there and finding out how they did it. Yeah, just go there, click on, uh, click on edit, or view source. So the view source will give it to you. Yeah, I mean, if it's contained within a template, then look for look for. Uh, sometimes it, it takes a while to find the specific thing, especially on Wikipedia, where there's chains of templates calling other templates, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, so it might take a, a while Would to find DBpedia the exact thing. Would Wikipedia permit us to do that? Dbpedia? Yeah, that's Wikipedia. No. I mean, well, it, it only accesses Wikipedia and it only gets the data. It doesn't get any of the actual wiki text. Oh, so DBpedia is, does not use semantic wiki, even though it's a wiki, it's a di semantic wiki. It's a semantic representation of a non-semantic wiki. So that's not, that's different from what you're doing. Yes, and, uh, and maybe in the wiki data talk or, or uh, it, 
I, I guess there, there's uh, an, two talks, one main wiki data talk and one that's, uh, that's, uh, that mentions it somewhere. And maybe in, in one of those two, DVpedia will be mentioned. And same with Freebase, which is another similar uh, project. You know, the differences between all those. So if things. you want to learn this, we have to go to something that actually is semantic wiki and, DB, and DBpedia is not one of those. Okay. Yeah, it's not a, I mean, yeah, it's not a wiki. You can't edit it. DBpedia is a basic data store. Okay. It, they, they, they curated the, the Wikipedia content and put it into the data store using their own ontology. Okay. Yeah. I didn't know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so to come back to your question, um, you can indeed just go find the things in the wiki if you know where to look. But then again, if it's a wiki that has a lot of content on it and has different things, um, then it's sometimes quite difficult to find actually where the actual things are that you want to use. And on the last few as well, you we actually discussed this particular issue and talked about setting up some kind of um, repository for applications made with semantic mail ID, right? That you can then just put into your wiki, import, and then you have your project management system or whatever, right? Um, and some people did some work in this direction, but um, as far as I know, this never really took off, um, but yeah. Yeah, there's one. There's one that was created in like 2008. I don't know if it's even worth talking about. It doesn't work anymore. I mean, it's, it, it's yeah, a CC team space. It was created by the uh, Creative Commons people. It doesn't work with existing software, but uh, it, this is you know, anyone is free to, to package up their uh, the forms, uh, properties, etc. Put it in a package like this one, and then you can just add a, a page for it on this uh, site, and everyone will see it. If they, if they want to see it. Yeah. Yeah, I mean that's a that's a great thing to do. You know, it's a great resource for other people. And actually, a lot of people were using CC Team Space at some point after it was first released. Uh, okay, so uh, approved revs I mentioned in the last talk. It's just a it's a it's a it's a nicer way of uh, protecting pages. Um, if I go to um, sorry. So I keep using Discourse DB as, a, as a, an example of stuff. But if I go here to the main page, it says at the top, I don't know if you can see this. It says, this is the approved revision of this page as well as being the most recent. Um, so if I go here to the history page, since I'm the administrator of this wiki, I can actually, uh, uh, yeah, this star says that this is the approved revision. I can actually set any other revision as the approved one and then it'll show a different uh, message on the top. So that's how that works. And then uh, Wikipedia has the flag refs extension, which is a lot more complicated, but a lot of people use that one too. Uh, data transfer, this gets back again to the idea of importing data. If you do want, if you have a set of data and you do want it to live on the wiki, meaning most likely you want people to start editing it collaboratively, then you would use this instead of the external data extension or instead of a triple store or that sort of thing. Um, uh, the most common usage for it is importing CSV files. So you have one big CSV file that you've generated somehow from all your data. Uh, and what it does is takes each row of that CSV file and makes a separate page out of it. Uh, there's a specific uh, syntax you have to use for the headers so it knows what the page name, what column represents the page name, and that sort of thing. Um, but then it basically saves each one to a page and then all the fields get saved to a, a template column within each page. And then you can create you can create the template, create the form and properties, etc., so that it all gets uh, stored semantically as if it had been entered directly into the wiki. Header tabs. Oh, okay, oh yeah. Oh, that's weird. I thought I thought I had oh, okay, I have these in the wrong order. Uh, here is a screenshot of what header tabs looks like. It's a, it's an easy way of creating tabs. Uh, for separating content, and that's that's it, there's nothing semantic about it, uh, as with a lot of these, but it's it's often used in conjunction with um, semantic media wiki based pages because they tend to have, or in some cases they have a lot of fields. So this is a nice way of, of splitting them out, so it's not all one huge field. Uh, here's an example of that in action. This is actually 
<coughs> tabs within a form, which you can do as well. Uh, so I can click on each of these. And it's really simple the way it's done in Wikitext. All you do is have one equals sign in around, each of, around each section instead of two. Basically, each of these represents just a section of the page. And then that's, that's enough for you to know that each of these should be a tab name. <clears throat> yeah, there's a lot of stuff here. Um. Oh, this reminds me, I didn't mention multiple instance templates for forms. Uh, too bad this is uh, disabled, so I can't do that. But um, this, is a way, this is a way for forms to handle uh, a table's worth of data. You know, I talked before about having a table of data instead of just individual items and how you need, uh, that's n area data that you need to make internal objects or sub-objects for. Uh, this is the way to do that with forms. Uh, if you, you, know, you, you create a template to represent a single row of that data and then you can have um, you know, multiple rows and you can add on additional ones or remove them or rearrange them. Uh, which I could do if, if, I, if this were not disabled. Um, uh, okay, so replace text. Uh, it just does a global text search and replace, which is something a feature that MediaWiki itself should have, but doesn't. So there had to be an extension for it. Um, it's it's useful for a whole lot of things, but it's uh, especially useful when dealing with semantic media with you because all all, all of these values have to be precise. Um, you know, so when you're doing querying, it's not it's it's not good if half of the things say United States and the other half say USA or that sort of thing. So if that happens, then you can you know, just run a bunch of uh, search and replace to. Uh, so you almost need an IDE for that. A what? You'd almost need an IDE. Uh, to do auto completion and stuff, or what? Yeah, especially if you have these, you know, um, you know, this logic. You know, you have you also have to be able to do logic in here, right? Uh, so I don't, I don't well, know auto what context. Auto completion is one part of it, but you know, if uh, you can essentially do almost programming logic and queries, query language is in there. Does this relate to replace text, or are you talking in general? Um, well, if you're replacing text in something that contains, you know, queries, then you are essentially programming. Uh, I, uh, yeah, I guess. I mean, uh, most of the time, this is just used for regular data, as opposed to for anything that can, that that contains queries. I mean, it's just used for you know, the page about a restaurant or a page about a, some hardware. Stuff, so you would be editing right, templates with this. Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, I, I doubt it. Right. Yeah, it's it's useful in the case where you have like a hundred different pages that you need to do the same action for for all of them, as opposed to for one thing. Yeah. In that case, you're better off just editing directly. Uh, widgets. Uh, it's widgets. It's really cool. It's you can see in a lot of places, uh, in, including on the current uh, SMWCon wiki. Uh, also, uh, yeah, you can see it everywhere. I mean, um, you can see here uh, this 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 Google Plus thing. That's a widget, right? Yes. Okay, yeah. And then there's a whoa. Uh, yeah, and this that should that should look nicer. But anyway. Um, it's it's it, it, I mean the single biggest usage of it is to display YouTube videos to, to sorry to embed the YouTube player in to, to display a video. Um, it basically uh, all it does is put together a snippet of HTML plus JavaScript on your page, uh, which MediaWiki doesn't allow you to do because that would be too dangerous. Um, uh, but you, you you can predefine them and then put them in. Uh, there's a whole lot of extensions uh, that. Have been created to do to display YouTube videos or uh, you know uh, any of the 20 other video players out there and audio players and all this other stuff. So widgets uh, removes the need for those by just creating a framework where you you just uh, are able to create any number of these little snippets or copy them from other wikis uh, and then use them within your wiki. Oh, okay, that's it. We're the last one. Uh, when, how much time do we have? Till, till 12 or 12.15 or what? 12, I guess until 12.15. 12.15. Oh, okay.
Um, yeah, I mean, I, I, you know, I, we could, um, uh, often when we do this, we also we have like a, a hands-on element. Uh, we're going to have the edit-a-thon later, so, so I don't know if we need to, to uh, do that as much, but it's, it certainly might be nice for people to try their hand at creating forms and stuff. I don't know what, what people want to do or if people have questions. Can do that too. Yeah. I had a comment about uh, widgets. It's also very helpful if you want to uh, bypass some of the limitations of MediaWiki to style uh, elements on a page. For example, if you have uh, MediaWiki, uh, you cannot uh, give a class to uh, a URL to a type on it. Right. Uh, when you define type on it, just a simple bracket, it, you get the class that is assigned to it by, by default. That's it. So if you want to create um, a jQuery button, so special elements that require giving a class to uh, a, a tag, a type on it, or any, any, anything else, you can create your own little uh, widget that uh, takes in parameter uh, the name of the link, the URL, and the class, and create your own link customized uh, exactly the way you want. So you can use it also that, that way to enrich uh, what, what is given by default by uh, Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, and there's actually even there's even simpler uses. I I, I used it once to uh, to just do a short URL thing. So you know you have a URL like yelp.com slash and then like 50 characters or whatever. Uh, and I just wanted just to say yelp.com and link to the full thing. So you can do that too. Yeah, it's a similar idea. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So actually, all these widgets, the central repository for all of them is at a, a, the site mediawikiwidgets.org, uh, where you can get the code for all of these different little widgets. Here's two of them. Anyway. Yeah. Google Street View, YouTube. Yeah, they've got, they've got a whole lot at this point. Flickr. Yeah, just another comment I want to make. Uh, one common complaint when we do blog tests and double with clients is this is just too plain. Uh, the, the typical vector skin. So this is a quick way of jazzing up your home page without really spending too much time. Yeah, it's true. Yeah, okay. but another way you can do that, um, which I think is more suited, is just using the um, MediaWiki's uh, mechanisms to inject JavaScript, such as, um, well, um, just there's a page called common.js, and if you put That's JavaScript true. there, it will just get loaded everywhere. And you also have uh, search pages per skin, so you can just add JavaScript to specific skins. Uh, same for CSS styles. Um, yeah. yeah. And then there also is the um, gadgets extension, which is sort of similar as this one, this one but it's just um, including JavaScript. Um, yeah, it's JavaScript for the interface as opposed to for the for within the wiki pages themselves, something like that. It's for it's more for for users as opposed to readers or something. I don't know. What was the uh, what was the one that does the, the unicorns and stuff? Oh. Do you really want me to show that one? Uh, well, you're talking about jazzing up a page. <laughs> okay, we want to see unicorns apparently. <laughs> in my opinion, it's the single best widget. Yeah, this is a widget every wiki should have, definitely. So. Oh yeah, Cornify. Yes. So this is a widget. Oh, yes. Yeah. So and if you click it, you get unicorns and your text gets oh, nice. <laughs> so. Show that to your investors. What was that page again? What? What was that page again? Oh, what was the page? Zero-x20.be, <laughs> but you can also find yeah, it on um, yeah. mediawikiwidgets.org. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay, yeah. Yeah, yeah okay. So. <laughs> that got the biggest reaction out of all of software. Um, uh, yeah, so, well, I guess, okay, yeah, we have about 10 minutes. I, I, other questions? But uh, yeah, sure. Are there any plans to get some of the more general 
extensions that are part of your bundle, such as the admin links, to be included by default in just MediaWiki in general? So not. I've, I've given up hope on that whole idea a long time ago. But yeah, it, it's very so difficult try. for um, third party developers to do this. Um, and yeah. It will only work for certain extensions, in particular the ones used by the foundation. Uh, these are likely to get into the, the default bundle, but uh, yeah. yeah. So maybe I can give a comment about this question. Uh, as Jeremy said in the morning, MediaWiki is there for Wikipedia. In the Wikipedia, <coughs> adding links is probably not really uh, necessary, because the admins which exist, they know exactly what they do. And a lot of other things that we saw today are not really relevant for Wikipedia right now, maybe. Right. So, so that means it, it won't go into the core anytime soon. And this yeah. is also the official statement of the Media Foundation. Yeah. Well, that's, yeah, that's, that's fine with me. That's, that's, yeah. <laughs> okay, I was just curious. So, uh, no, no, question to. Yeah. No. Yeah. yeah. I'm just wondering, um, with your own being busy with Wikidata, <coughs> in terms of maintaining these extensions, of course, Jared's there. And Marcus is also busy with Wikidata. We're wondering that's, if. Okay, yeah. Yeah, that's a, that's a, that's a, that's a good point. Uh, it's just the, the whole idea of. Uh, how, and more generally, you see an extension, it's like, who is, who's maintaining this? How do you know? Is it being mainta maintained? Uh, who do you know? Who do you talk to if there's a problem? What are the chances that someone will answer you? That sort of thing. Um, it's uh, yeah, it sort of varies from case to case. WordPress has a really nice structure where you can you can see people give different ratings to different extensions, and you can see you know uh, general comments about each one uh, and that sort of thing. MediaWiki doesn't have anything like that, um, so. Um, there's there's some there's there's uh, there's some indicators that you can use to see how well an, an extension is being maintained. I mean, you can see the time when it was last updated. You can check the talk page to see if there's a lot of a lot of questions like this isn't working, what's going on, and no responses and that sort of thing. Or if there's no no discussion, no comments at all. Um, uh, uh, and then the, the semantic bundle. Uh, things like the semantic bundle we give a you know a curated sense of you know these are extensions that are that are working and are good which doesn't exactly answer your question of like what's going to happen in the future with all these specific extensions um, I think these are the, all the extensions we've talked about I think are in good shape and are going to be maintained you're still working on you're still you know yeah I'm still maintaining um, all my things um, actually in the last year or so, I've seen lots of people um, starting to poke at the code and contributing things more than before. So um, now most of the work I'm doing is just fixing bugs or reviewing code that other people wrote and making sure that it can be merged in without too many hassles uh, or causing issues, right? And this one maybe with, with the move to GitHub, maybe it, there would be more contributors. Yeah, I hope so, and it will definitely be easier to merge and change from other people. Uh, for example, for Maps, I, there are now three people adding new features to it. Um, <laughs> I'm sort of wondering when I'm going to find all the time to review it all, but it, it's definitely not like if I drop out or if Yarn drops out that the extensions will go unmaintained. Uh, there are certainly other people involved. And, um, if one of us drops out, I'm certain that other people would step in to do what the community and the clients need, right? Yeah. And but we're also, we're, I would say we're always looking for new uh, developers and new committers stuff, so, you know, if, if, if anybody, if any of you are, uh, want to use these, uh, want, want to get involved in development or are using these extensions and want to add features, uh, and that sort of thing. That's that's how people get their start with all this stuff anyway, and that's how I got my start. Uh, just making little changes and you, you sort of get sucked into the the, the, the whole world of it because it's fun. So so you know, please uh, please consider.
Yeah, and yeah. also if you're a developer or have a team of developers working, then make sure that you're communicating with the, the already existing developers. Uh, because a lot of the time I see people just make their own thing at some place nobody knows about and then um, maybe release it somewhere and then it becomes completely unmaintained without anybody ever having a real look at it and giving feedback that might not be helpful. So if you're working on a project uh, related to Minality or semantic Minality, then please do use the uh, Wikimedia repository so people see what's going on People can help you, um, tell you what you could do better, um, so that it has a uh, much higher chance of um, remaining maintained. Okay. That's for new extensions. Uh, yes. Yeah. yeah. But and and for if you're making, but it happens a, a lot that people make changes to existing extensions and then don't bother to you send the code back and stuff. So that tied in with that is you should talk to the extension developers and send them patches and that sort of thing. Well, especially yeah. if not the license. But uh, for open layers, do, do they have uh, throttling limits? Or can you make as many calls to open layer based maps? Or? So, um, open layers is a JavaScript library to display maps. Okay. It does not provide you with any um, actual data. So, the, the tiles of the maps come from a different place. So, open layers itself has no limit because all the JavaScript will be on your wiki server, um, but then depending on which mapping service you use, there might be limits. Uh, yeah. OpenLayers actually allows to use pretty much any mapping service, so you can display Google Maps with OpenLayers, and then you will have some kind of limit, uh, especially with geocoding requests, that's something people regularly poke me about, that they hit the limit, um, um, yeah. I, I guess the same is true for um, services such as open layers and um, yeah, geo names for geocoding. Um, yeah, ge geocoding is when you just enter the the address or something, and then it has to find the coordinates of that thing. Yes, right. Um, yeah, so it depends on the service you use. Um, for most small wikis, it's not an issue, but if you have really big wiki and you want to serve really millions upon millions of um, maps a day, then you might want to look into having your own um, mapping server that serves the tiles, right? Uh, and open layers support this. Um, so you, you should actually be able to have this working with maps and semantic maps without <coughs> making actual changes. I think the configuration can handle it already. Yeah. Well, I kind of new at looking at all the latest extensions, but I do recall there was some um, uh, task management built right in to, uh, as, as one of the extensions. Uh, there's an extension called Semantic Tasks. Semantic Tasks, okay. Uh, may or may not be what you are, what you're talking about. Well, I, I do but recall seeing that. And my actually, that, I wouldn't call that a task management thing, even though it has a task okay. in, the, in the name. Semantic Tasks just sends you emails when a certain date oh. is reached. Uh, uh, that's right. That, there isn't much. But my, my question to you is: Is there now an extension or any known uh, development of, say, integrating one of the uh, open source existing uh, uh, workflow uh, process uh, engines? Well, yeah, um, I'm not familiar uh, or not aware of any project to actually code an extension for this. But like I mentioned earlier, um, well, I think this is related to the having a repository of applications written with semantic minority. So yeah. you, you can create your own... Um, yeah, I mean, you can do a lot of that kind of stuff using using forms and watch lists and all this, uh, you know, using these existing tools that you then uh, configure uh, to store information about tasks or projects or whatever it is. It, it, I guess it depends in large part on what, it, what exactly you mean. But uh, uh, a lot of this stuff it, it's, it's done on purpose to be very generic so that you can then put it together in a, in a variety of ways depending on the type of data you have. Um, uh, yeah, beyond that, I don't, I don't know. Okay, so we'll work from the outside then using the uh, uh, one of the BPM packages to reach into this program and use its forms and so on? 
as opposed to trying to get something that's more tightly integrated? Uh, it, I, again, it, it depends on what, what, what exactly, I, I mean, uh, task management, I, I guess, like social software and a bunch of other stuff, it sort of means a, a, a lot of things to a lot of people, I would say. I mean, there's a lot of potential features that could be included in that. So, so yeah, it, it depends on, on uh, what exactly uh, you're referring to. Um, yeah, definitely, this, this, so this system can't do everything that, you know, an off-the-shelf uh, uh, what is it, VPN tool or, or uh, can do, or, or knowledge management, or uh, uh, CRM, or whatever it is that, that, uh, that you're trying to do, but it can, it can, it can do a lot of it. show two things uh, relating to semantic form since we have, I guess, a, a little bit of time left. Uh, one is uh, that you can, uh, you can create a form using special run query. You can create a form that doesn't do any editing of pages, it just runs a query. Uh, so for instance, on this, on this page I can find all the, uh, all the editorials written by an author containing a certain string and a source containing a certain string. So I can do uh, A here and uh, C here or something. Um, okay, so yeah, finds. So yeah, John O'Sullivan contains A, and Chicago Sun Times contains C. Uh, that sort of thing. Uh, this can be used for a variety of, of things. I mean, uh, it's sort of a it's sort of an alternative uh, search browsing interface to semantic drill down here. It's uh, instead of drilling down one step at a time, it's a more traditional sort of field based uh, search uh, thing. Uh, and then the other thing I wanted to show briefly was the way to get started with all of this, which may come in handy with the edit of the later, is the, the page called Special Create Class. Um, this is the easiest way to create, well, unless you want to use page schemas, uh, that one's a little more complex. This is the easiest way to, uh, to create everything at like, one time. You say, you know, I want to I wanna have a... Um, uh, Create a, have a, a whole data structure uh, about uh, uh, animals or something. So I say, you know, the name of the template is animal, the, the name of the form is animal, and then the category is named animals, and then I have the property name like, uh, you know, uh, number of legs, uh, that sort of thing. Put that in. Uh, and then I can say this is a number. And so on. I can keep going, and then. When I, when I hit create, then it creates everything. It creates the, the properties, the template, and the form, and the category. Um, uh, yeah, as far as, oh yes, yeah, so, uh, this is kind of minor, but property naming. Some people make it a verb, so it be has number of legs. Some people just keep it simple. Uh, that's stri strictly a matter of personal choice. Sometimes it can be confusing, like if you just call your property capital, then it can be confusing. It's like, do you mean it's the capital of something, or it has the capital of something? So that's a case where having some, a few more words would be useful. So, uh, yeah. Uh, oh, and, the, well, okay. All right, very briefly, besides create class, there's also the, some other helper page or, pages that uh, semantic forms defines this create property, which just lets you create a property. Uh, basically, each of these elements has its own uh, uh, helper page. Create template, 
lets you uh, create just a template. You can add as many fields as you want. Uh, and as you've guessed, there's also create form uh, and uh, create category. But create class basically ties them all in together in one. Any, any other questions? Oh yeah, okay. Do you have one? Yeah. There is a, a parser function for, for input that allows yes. you to embed a little form in a page and do some autocomplete on whatever the form supports. Right. Properties and so on. Uh, but that, one, that function opens the form, uh, or opens the page in edit mode if uh, it appears yes. to exist. Is there, is there an option available to open the page itself in read mode? And not in, in form. Uh, no, but that would be good. Because yeah, that, that would be. Uh, uh, I've I run into several situations where it would be nice to have a little form like this to do uh, a lookup of pages and open them if they exist uh, with autocomplete to, to simplify the form. For example, if you have a, a, a category uh, for a dictionary or acronyms, uh, you it right. would be uh, useful to. Yeah. Offer a little lookup look up feed like that that would auto complete only on uh, pages with that category. Or if you have a, 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 a particular right. property, yeah, yeah. being able to limit it to only that. Yeah, there's definitely yeah. an argument to be made for that. What he's talking about, by the way, is uh, uh, interestingly, form pages both define the form and also tend to be the interface for accessing the form, which is a little confusing. Uh, but uh, behind the scenes, the stuff that you don't see is the form definition, but what you do see is the uh, is a little interface here, go which leads the user to the form itself. Um, uh, so you know, if I type in, you know, an ex it'll do some auto completion. Uh, you know. So if I type the, that in, that's an existing form, and it'll take me to edit it. Um, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, it. That's, that definitely makes sense as a feature to add to a form input, and you could make a case that that should even be the default behavior, but that's a, a bigger... Well, it's the default, but at least a parameter to, to open... To form in, input, yeah. Yeah, to yeah. Put it in remote that would be very helpful. Yeah. It's oh, a good idea. I'll send the request. What? I'll send the feature request. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, if you have a, a feature request, the best place to do it actually is there's a bunch of ways you can write about it on the top page or email the, the author, whoever it is, uh, or email the, the SMW mailing list, et cetera. And I think that the best way is to, is to submit it in Bugzilla. Do you agree with that? Yeah. 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 It, Bugzilla is definitely the place to put feature requests and also obviously bugs. Um, because if you just put it on a top page somewhere, people might not see it, especially the maintainers. Um, uh, if you just mail them personally, then you're sort of forcing it upon them, and if they don't have time, they might forget about it. Yeah, yeah. Well, there could be other people that do have time to fix this, so if you put it on Bugzilla, everybody that wants to fix it can fix it, and people that have the same issue might already have come up with a solution, and then you can discuss for it. So. That's it. Where is that located? Bugzilla. Wikimedia. Oh, Bugzilla. Wikimedia. Org. There's a link on the homepage. Oh, okay. Cool. Okay. Yeah. I'd, I'd say we're. I'd say we're done. Uh, oh. Oh yeah. Okay. We have one final question. Um, I've got a uh, pretty cool parametric search on this site. Also was. Right. And uh, one of the things it does is I can include the title of the page in the search, and it can be either exact or inexact, because I made a field for the page title. So I can include in my inline query. The only thing my search is missing is the ability to search strings and free tags on the same page. What are the difficulties for that? Yeah, yeah, being able to search on free text. Yeah. That's what you're talking about. Yeah. What yeah. Right. Right. That's. Uh, yeah. That would be. That would be great. If. Um, well, I shouldn't say that would be because there are ways to do that. But 
it's, uh, it's nice to be able to do a, both a regular text search and a parameterized SMW based search at the same time. Um, uh, unfortunately, there's, the, the, there's no standard way to do that uh, because uh, you know it's two different things that you're hitting to, 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 to query the two different things. I believe there's, a, there's an extension called Solar Store that lets you do that. Uh, and I can say something. Yeah. yeah. Probably non extension, which I have today in the afternoon. That's exactly that. It stores the full text and all the properties in the solar index. Uh -huh. So it lets you do better search on top of the semantic data. It also allows you to add a free text so that you find all the pages containing the search string. Mm -hmm. And this is if you want one dimension for the test. The other dimensions are all the properties and all the categories we find. So I, in other words, I can do a run query, check out some properties, and also include text and have a result. It's not a query. Okay. It's uh, only going against the index. But uh, conceptually, it's the same thing. If you see, you see the selected passage, if you are experienced in ask queries, you exactly know what ask query would look like. But that's really what you want to Will it be Boolean also? Any of the course? No. Uh, the user will take that. Okay. Cool. Thank you. That's the end.